Welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to resume where we left off and implement native functions. So um, to implement native functions, I first want to talk about what native functions are, right? In JavaScript or other languages, you have built-in methods that are predefined in your global scope. For example, in JavaScript, you can do something like console.log and console is a native object. It's defined in the global scope attached to the window property. So in our language, I'm going to define a method called a print. And what it's going to take in is a variadic number of arguments. So for example, if you just pass in print with no arguments, it won't do anything. But if you pass in print with, say, 10 uh, divided by 2, you'll see 5. You could pass in a string like hello world, like so. And it'll print these just the way that JavaScript will. So let's first um, think about how we want to really implement a print function. Um, we've already implemented variable assignments, variable declarations, and variable accessors, which means we can access right this foo variable and get the value. So when you think about it, if we just do this, right, just print without any call, and we just run this, um, what we would expect to see is if I just do dino run dash a main.ts, we can see uncaught and promise cannot resolve print as it does not exist. So what's happening is, is it's trying to find a variable called print. So that's one way uh, I think we can start thinking about how we want to look at native functions, right? We want to value a variable, a runtime variable, defines in a scope, which then when we do this, right, we can have a call expression, which we've already defined previously, right, a call expression, and we'll have the caller, which will contain the identifier and the arguments. So let's actually go ahead and get started implementing it so um, we can actually get this to work. So we don't need to touch anything in the front end side of things since we've already implemented the parser um, for call expressions. So let's go ahead into the values.ts and let's go ahead and create a new type of uh, value. So this is going to contain a type of native function like so. And I'm going to go all the way on down to the bottom and create a new uh, type exports interface. native function value is going to extend a runtime uh, runtime value like so. Okay, so what this is going to contain is a type property like before and this is going to be a native function, right? Um, and then the it's going to have a couple things, right? We basically want to contain a method that we can call. So this is going to be an actual JavaScript method that we're kind of wrapping right with this type. So we're just going to call it the call method and I'm just going to call it a function um, call. Uh, we'll just call it a function call like so. And I'm going to define this right here. Exports type function call. And what is it? It's going to be a method which we want to take in our arguments, right? If we look back at our terminal, we can see that we passed in these arguments and these arguments are something we actually want to capture. So we're going to take in some arguments, which is going to be of type runtime value array, right? Because we want to capture all the arguments and we might, depending on, right? For a user defined function, we definitely want to know the scope. However, for a native function, we might not care much about the scope that we're currently in, but we'll still pass it in. The environment is going to be um, of type environment, like so. And I also need to import this up above. Imports from dot slash, and I think it's environments.ts. There we go. So we have our environments and like so. So what we want to do is in a native function call, we take in arguments, we'll get an environment passed in, and we want to return, right? We want to return 
a runtime value like so. And this is how we can create a native function value. So that's really cool. Now, what we want to do is I'm going to just create, um, yeah, that's good. So now what we want to do is let's create a function exports. Uh, I forgot how we define functions up above. I'm just going to copy this. We're going to create a function that's called make, make native FN, right? What it's going to take in is the name. Actually, we don't even need to take in the name. We're just going to take in a call method. So call is going to be a function call like so. And now we can say, hey, return this as a native function value. The value is instead going to be called call. And this is going to be called native fn, like so. And there we go. This is going to allow us to create a native function. So let's now go on ahead and create a native function that we can just see how this will work. So I'm going to go into the environment.ts class. In here, we remember we have our environment.declare where we can set up some basic things like true, false, null. We can create a version, all that good stuff. And let's create, uh, define a native method. What we're going to do is we're going to do an EMV. Right? So this is going to be the global environment right here. And we're going to declare a variable called prints. Uh, prints like so what is it going to contain as the value right the value is uh, i'm going to also just say true because we want it to be constant we don't want people to override our functions and the value is going to be make native function the native function is going to expect a call so what we could do is do this in line right we can create an arrow function which takes in the arguments and the environment um, they're all called scope like so and then we can just simply return uh, make null I'm just gonna do just to demonstrate that this is gonna be a valid function right we could just do it in line or you can have in a separate file um, this anonymous function could actually be like an actual function but for now, just let's just really quickly demonstrate how we would use um, a basic print function. Again, we're just going to do a for const, um, or actually we can just do this since we're in JavaScript. Console.log, and we're just going to spread out args. And that's going to print off each of these runtime values individually. Now again, this isn't going to look the best, right? It's going to print off the entire object, but this will just show um, how this works. If you wanted to create a custom print function that actually looks good, you'd probably want to right, create a custom function that has like a switch over all the possible value types and handles them on their own. Okay, so we have this native function, right? We're still not done. We, need, we can come in here and go run it, right? And we see, oh, this AST node has not yet been set up for interpretation, but what's really cool is we can come into the um, test.txt and instead of just printing it, right, if we just leave it without the call and we run it, we can actually see that we have a type native function and it has this call. So we can kind of see what we're going to want to do when we actually interpret this function in runtime. So let's go on over to the interpreter.ts right here. And in here, we can see that we're going to want to create a function um, that basically does what we need to do. So what we're going to do is we're going to come into the eval expressions. And at the very bottom, I'm basically just going to copy this eval object expression code, paste it below, and we're going to change this to eval call expression. It's going to take in not an object literal, it's going to take in a uh, call expr like so and I'm going to just call it um, expr like so and I'm going to literally get rid of all of this good stuff right here and at the very end I'm just going to return a make uh, make where's an all 
like so, just to just so we don't have the error right there, right? Okay, so what we want to do is I'm going to console.log the expur that we get back. And if you don't remember what the expur was, it was a call expression. It has an arguments property, which is an expression array. The caller, which is the actual expression, it should be an identifier for now. And the kind is we already know. So I'm going to just log this just so we can see what we actually get back when we call this. So we export this eval call expur. And I'm going to go into the uh, interpreter.ts and actually um, set this up, right? So underneath, we'll put it by the object one. I'm going to copy this. Instead of object, it's going to be call expur, call expur. And this is going to be a call expur, like so. And I need to quickly import like there. Okay, there we go. So now I'm going to actually go ahead and call this. And we can pass in something like foo and um, 45. Let's just do that, right? And let's see what we get out of this, right? So if we run this, here we go. What we get is we get the, the value we're printing, right? We see that it's a kind. We see the caller, which has a symbol of print. And it's of type identifier. Okay, so that's actually really important here. When we call a function, we want to make sure that the caller is either a identifier like this, or it's an actual function already, right? So we'll do a quick check on that. And then we can also see the args, right? We want to print off a foo, and the value 45 has already been pre computed um, right there. So yeah. Let's now go ahead and implement this so we can finish this off. So inside of the eval call expur, what we're gonna wanna do is we're gonna wanna basically get each of the arguments. So we have let args, I'm actually just gonna make it constant, const args is, and if you recall, right, we get back inside of the expur, the args is an expression array. But inside of our call, we need it to be a runtime value array, which means we need to actually compute all of the expressions at runtime. So I'm going to do args, right? And I'm going to do a map over all the arg. And we're going to get each argument. And we're going to return, right? We basically want to map over all of the arguments and return a call to evaluate. We're going to pass in the arg and the environments, like so. And this is just gonna say for each argument, map over it, and get the actual runtime value per that argument. And now you can see we have our runtime value array, so we have our actual arguments, like so. Next, what we wanna do is we actually want to evaluate the function, right? We wanna get the function out of this. So what we're gonna do const fn is equal to evaluates, um, expr dot and we want to evaluate the color like so and we're going to pass in the environment as well this will give us our actual runtime value now this should be of type function so we're going to do a quick check if fn dot type is not equal to native function and we'll at in the next episode we'll check if it's equal to a function like so but again we don't have that yet so we'll check if it's not equal to a native function we're just going to throw um, uh, cannot call value that is not a function and we're just going to pass in stringify of fun there we go so that's all we're going to do for a really really basic check and now we'll know that this is actually a function. So we can do const fn, um, we can just do I'm just gonna do it as a native function value right now. Um, actually we'll just do it down here. So we're gonna do let's uh, callable is equal to um, fn dot oh yeah I need to cast it fn as native function value dot call 
right? So here we have our function call. And instead of just doing this, I'm just gonna get the result like so. And we're gonna make it constants. So now we have this result, and we're just gonna call this call function. And it's gonna take in our arguments, so we already have those, and our environment, like so. And now, instead of returning make null, we'll just return results. And there we go, that's all we have to do. Now what'll happen is, is we're gonna get our results, return it, right? That's gonna be the return. But when we call the function, we're now bridging the gap, right? This call method, is the method we set up in our right here, right? This is the method. This anonymous function is going to get called with the argument. So now we bridge the gap from um, our runtime to an actual native function implementation. So again, in C or other languages, you're going to have a little bit more trickery playing with um, pointers and dealing with the type safety of this. JavaScript, since this is a dynamic language, we can really easily just set up um, TypeScript unions like this and it'll work. So let's now go ahead and run this and see if this actually works. And it looks like it does, right? We see our value 7.5 and on the same line, we see our value 45. We also see a type null and value null because that's what the final return type was which means now we don't even have to really log the result when we're done evaluating everything. We can instead just let it all run and we can see that this is what happens when you print um, like so. So let me create one more function just to demonstrate that you can do obviously really anything, right? What we could do is we can come into our environment.ts and let's create a function that gets the current time, right? So it's gonna be emv dot declare variable it's going to be just called time i'm going to do make native function and i'm going to call it time function like so and it's going to be true because it is a constant now this time function i'm going to create right here time function uh, it's going to take in some arguments which again is going to contain a runtime val array in the environments is an environment like so what we're going to do is we are going to go ahead and return make number of uh, not math sorry dates dot now and there we go that's that's all we're going to do for this function right we're just going to take in these values make a number and now we can see that we'll actually have a function uh, called time that will allow us to get the current time in milliseconds using JavaScript's built-in. So we can run it. Again, nothing breaks. We could also separate these functions, right, um, into their own file. But for now, I'm just going to leave these here. And so let's go ahead into the test and get our current time. So const, const time now is equal to time. And we're just going to print it out like so. And there we go. We actually see our current time in milliseconds. I can keep running this. And you'll see that this is the current time in milliseconds. So you can imagine how you'd be able to create a whole bunch of functions built in that do custom things like checking the type of a value. You'd be able to create functions um, that do all that good stuff. So yeah. That is how you can implement native functions in the language, and I hope you found this useful. If you did, please don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next episode where we will finally, I think, implement um, user-defined functions. So yeah, talk to you then. Bye.